as guys, uh, we can't be just internalizing micro information and then dishing it out. You need to situate it in a much longer and broader perspective so that you can offer it to your pilgrims. Catholicism in Asia, we have um, these, the first one coming through would be St. Francis Xavier as um, the Jesuit who came through India at that time, uh, Goa and etc. and then come to Singapore. Now, but, uh, sorry, India, Malacca, not Singapore, and then to uh, China. Now, what is closer would be St. Lawrence Imber. St. Lawrence Imber and Father Burel, they were MEP priests, like Father Aro. Okay. Father Aro, uh, your parish? What is your parish? You, you, are, you are belonging to it? Okay, good. So, um, and they came, they were the French missionaries who came and founded the Catholic Church in Singapore. 1839, uh, when Father Burel was sent here and they built the first chapel and the first church which we have now, the uh, Good Shepherd uh, Cathedral. Okay. That was the year when Lawrence Imbro was beheaded in Korea. Uh, and when he gave himself up when the, during the persecution, he wrote to, to say that in times like this, the Good Shepherd should die for his flock. And therefore, the church, the first church we have in Singapore is Good Shepherd. Now, and then, so this is the, the sequence of how the different, the chronological um, details of how the various parishes, uh, various churches were built, okay? Um, it was because the parishioners of Good Shepherd grew, and so the Chinese um, moved, and Tamil moved out and formed a community at St. Peter's and Paul Church. And then it grew further, and so Our Lady of Luz for the Tamil speaking, and it grew again. Um, the more Teochew migrants were coming in, um, and they were in different parts of Singapore. The, the, uh, farmers and, and fishermen uh, settled in Aokang and also Yochukang, that area. So, the Tibeti, then the Cantonese group grew and had Sacred Heart. Okay. So, that was how the, in the city, in the town area, the churches were much moving there. Okay. Then came a time when even more migrants were coming in. Uh, Teochew, Hokkien, etc. And then there was a need for more uh, space for worship and that's how St. Jesus Church is built. Okay. So this is the root of how this uh, neighborhood of faith began. Now, we need to move a bit backwards in order to see the significance of this. And this slide is very important. Now, the MEP priests and we owe it to them that we have our archdiocese. Yeah? The early days, all those churches mentioned were all built and begun um, by the MEP priests until our own came along and grew the church alongside. Okay? And they are still with us today as a strong pillar and support of our archdiocese. Okay? Now, the Father Burel, when he built the cathedral, he was not just focused on the building because that's much, that much you do for the people as for providing a building. The people was more important than the building. To grow a church is to grow the people. Therefore, immediately after um, doing the church up, he went back to France. Okay? These are French missionaries. Okay? went back to France to get the Lassa brothers and the IJ sisters over um, for Catholic education. Now, 
uh, to also put it in perspective is that during this time in the 17th century, it was massive poverty in France and in all parts of the world. And then the uh, industrialization was, um, the industrial revolution was beginning. Children at that time were child laborers, okay? slaves, servants, um, uh, prostitutes. Okay? The poor had no opportunity for school. Education was available only for the rich. Okay? Private tutors coming to the home, um, and then after that, seminaries, etc. Okay? Now, the movement in France, I refer to the education movement that swept across France at that time. Okay. Um, Father Barre and some other uh, priests were, were together and contemplated and all, and their response to that time was, we need to provide education for the masses and the poor. And that was how it began. La Salle came on board for the boys' education and gradually um, they all grew across the, the, the country. Okay. MEP started at that time. And MEP started as a missionary movement. That means the priests in France, when they joined the local diocese, they served France. But when they joined the MEP society, they are sent out. Okay. And that was how we received them. Okay. Now, with that missionary perspective of France at that time, okay, and the movement that was going on, Burel grew up in an era understanding the importance of education. Okay. Then you also find that this was also the era where in terms of spirituality of the church, the incarnational spirituality was important. Church, before that and during that time, was very much segregated as in the clergy, the bourgeoisies, the, the royalties, um, even the sacraments were out of reach of the common people and the faithful. So the whole movement of education, enlightenment, as well as the spirituality that was growing was this awareness that <coughs> Christ came among us as a child and it is to reach everyone. God didn't become incarnate as a human person just so as to set himself apart on a throne. God came to be Emmanuel among us. And so it is this era that the understanding of we now need to awaken the dignity of everyone as sons and daughters of God and it's important and we do that through education and education to reach to the poorest and the masses. Okay? So when it comes to, it's interesting that Saint Therese, okay, at her time, then that whole um, capacity and spirituality have now grown to be very much um, practical, realistic, and uh, with two feet on the ground. It's no more a spirituality that is uh, high up, high up. She is a child of Jesus, you know, a child of God. Okay? And Therese then, with that whole movement in France and missionary dimension of, of, uh, the, of France, um, she became the, uh, the patron of missionaries. Okay? So this is the whole context that we, uh, we have inherited from. Bearing in mind that the colonization of English, uh, the English, the um, Spanish and the Portuguese uh, carried along the political and economic interests when they went all over the world. But for the French missionaries, it was very focused for the love of God. Okay. And we have inherited this um, in Singapore. Okay. Now, 
the key to a key figure that we want to the pilgrims to experience, besides that all that origin is Father Stephen Lee, um, Malaysian, and then served here as particularly this parish as well as Mandai. Okay. Uh, so his life and he gave how he gave himself to the pastoral care of this uh, parish, etc., is something that we we would want to pass on as an inspiration to the pilgrims and to the students. The other thing that we need to remember is that when the when the parish was set up and when the schools were started in this area, whether LaSalle or uh, IJ, um, and how the rest came, it was for the little people and the poor. This whole area began with squatters, um, <coughs> The, of the uh, workers, the migrant workers at the railway and the port. Okay? This entire area was just Kampong. Okay? Um, and it is to these poor that we, the church came from. Okay? 